Hi and hello. Welcome to Star Wars Classes. This is Dr. Rudra Sarkar over here. And in continuation with the lecture series of oxidation reagents, we are discussing today Krieg's oxidation today. What is a reagent? Basically, it is used for cleavage of 1,2 diols, also known as glycols. To the corresponding carbonyl compounds by the lead tetraacetate, where the oxidation state on the lead is 4, and in an organic solvent, obviously, and the whole thing is known as Krieg's oxidation. Few more things cis vicinal diols or 3 O diols are cleaved much faster than the trans vicinal diols or the erythrodiols. Cis diols can be tritated with, that is basically addition of lead tetracid without the interference of aliphatic glycols and trans glycols on 5 member drinks. Okay, so over here we have a cis or trans alicyclic 1, 2 diol and R, whether it is R1, R2, R3, R4 can be a H or alkyl and we are using the lead tetrad state. So lead is going from plus 4 to plus 2 state that is over here, diacetate and we are getting the corresponding carbonyl compounds. Out here, in case of cyclic 1, 2 diol, we can see it leads to the oxidative cleavage of the CC bond also over here and leads to the formation of the carbonyl compounds. If R over here is H, then it will be aldehyde at the both ends or it will be ketone if R is alkyl. The oxidation is complementary to the ozonolysis of double bonds since alkenes are easily dihydroxylated okay. and one can get the desired carbonyl compounds over here. Next, how does this happen? There are two proposed pathways for it and we can see over here. It can lead to the formation of a five-membered intermediate, very much similar to the periodic acid mechanism if you recollect the malaprade oxidation reaction. And here we can see the bond is cleaving, leading to the formation of a double bond. This goes and reduces the lead to lead 2. That goes in here and so we can get the carbonyl compounds or by path 2 where one of the OH groups will be removing the acetate group and then via this particular transition state where the bond breaks as shown over here and it leads to the formation of the carbonyl compounds. Okay. Next, what we can think of Glycols are cleaved with ease under mild conditions in good yield using both the reagents periodic or lead tetracetate. Other functional groups such as beta amino alcohols, 1 2 diamines, 2 hydroxy aldehydes or ketones, comma alpha diketones or keto aldehydes undergo similar cleavage upon treatment with lead tetra acetate okay so here we have simple one degree alcohol undergoes oxidation to aldehyde we have a pi bond or allylic alcohol and that will also undergo oxidation to the aldehyde and nothing happens to the pi bond okay not only 1, 2 diols but also 1, 3 diols can be oxidized to their corresponding ketones or aldehydes. But here no cleavage is happening because it is not 1, 2. Out here this is a 1, 2 diol so 
oxidative cleavage will happen of this particular bond over here and this will lead to the formation of aldehydes. Over here, one fundamental difference with the per iodic acid because out here after cleavage, we can think double bond here and double bond there. So this is a ketone and this is a imine, but since the condition is not acidic, so imine will not undergo any hydrolysis. As we had seen in the cases of malapid oxidation reaction using HiO4. So in case of a diamine, it will go, diamine will go to di, I mean will undergo cleavage to form the two imine molecules. Again, no hydroxylation takes place. Quinols will undergo oxidation to quinones as shown over here. Here we have again a 1 comma 2. So this bond will break up leading to the formation of a ketone and so this is the forming ketone and that is also forming the ketone. So 1 and 2 position ketones are formed. Again as we can see 1 and 6 are 1 comma 2 diols. This bond will cleave and ketones will be formed. Similarly these are the 1 comma 2 diols. Okay. So over here cleavage will take place and it will lead to the formation of the aldehyde on this carbon, carbon 1 and ketone at this carbon over here. Next, one very interesting example in which we are using the octaethyl porphine of a nickel in which the pi bond on the pyrrole ring has undergone the hydroxylation and we are treating this with the lead tetraacetate to cliff this particular bond over here and it leads to the formation of this molecule. This molecule has many uses in the porphyrin chemistry. Again we have taken a 1 comma 2 diol so oxidative cleavage will take place on this bond. We have taken a alpha hydroxy ketone, so this will become the acid and that will become the aldehyde. 1 comma 2 dicarboxylic acids undergo oxidative decarboxylation to form alkenes. What is that? So suppose we have taken this 1 comma 2 dicarboxylic acid and since we are using the lead tetraacetate, decarboxylation will take place and out here via a radical pathway, we will say it leads to the formation of the ene. Similar mechanism will operate over here and that also will become the ene. Interesting problem. Again, another example. Again, it will lead to the formation of ene and decarboxylation of these groups. As a acetoxylating and methylating reagent. The reagent acetoxylates the reactive methyl groups and the active methylene groups. So if you have been given a ketone over here and the LTA is given, then obviously one has to think of the alpha position getting acetoxylated. Okay. Out here we have an active methylene group. So this will preferentially get acetoxylated compared to this one. In case of aromatic hydrocarbons, the susceptible positions of attack are benzylic and the 9-10 positions of anthracene. So over here also we can see this particular CS3 group will get acetoxylated. Okay. And out here in the 9 or 10 positions, one can think of the formation of a OAC bond. So these are somehow few exceptional reactions that are also seen with the reagent of lead tetracetate. Uncommon reactions, so most of the time they are not given, but chances are with the uh, 
new types of questions being asked these days in CSRNet. Mostly in this section C, uh, one can expect such type of non-regular reactions of lead tetracetate in that section. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.